I am Fred Dotson of realitycreation.org, and this video cast is on the power of deciding, the power of conscious deciding. I'm going to guide you through an exercise so that you can experience this power yourself. As you sit there, Make a conscious decision over what body movement you're going to make. Once you've consciously decided, follow that decision with action and make that body movement. And once again, make a conscious decision about what you're going to do next. And once you've consciously decided, make that body movement. And once again, decide what you're going to do next. And once you've decided, make that body movement. Now I'm going to show you something. Once again, decide which body movement you're going to make. And once you've decided, do something else. Deciding one thing and doing another will have created a subtle tension, a subtle split of attention. And if that accumulates throughout the day, which it does in many people, you create an inner tension, an incongruency between what you think and what you do. So let's take this a little bit further. Consciously decide what you're going to put your attention on, what you're going to focus on next. Once you've decided, focus on that. While still focusing on that, make a new decision what you're going to focus on next. And once you've decided and you're sure you've decided, focus on that. This is what conscious, congruent deciding feels like. You think something and then you do it. Once more, decide what to focus on next. Once you've decided what to focus on, focus there. And then, once more, decide what to focus on next. And once you've decided, focus somewhere else. And once again, some of you will have experienced a subtle tension, a subtle incongruency, because you thought one thing and did another. And as these things accumulate in daily life, you create stress and incongruency. As you think one thing, say another, and do yet another, you create chaos in your energy field. 
and your decisions do not come to pass, do not manifest because you contradict your decisions all the time. That's why it has such a calming effect to consciously decide. Now decide what you're going to think next. And once you've made your decision what to think about, think that thought. And now decide what you'd like to think next. Once you've decided for a thought, think the new thought. You'd be surprised how many people don't even know that they can choose their own thoughts in this way. And now decide to think of a snow-covered mountain. What was that? That was manipulation, indoctrination from my side. It was not you that decided to think of a snow-covered mountain. It was me. And I manipulated you by saying, decide to think that as if it were your decision, but it was not. So let's try this again. I'm going to command you to think about a snow-covered mountain, but I'd ask you to think something else of your choosing. Okay? So when I give the command, think something else. Decide to think of a snow-covered mountain. So you see, you're not... You don't have to buy in to my thoughts. You can choose your own. If my thoughts are nice, sure, you can buy into them, but you don't have to. Even less people are aware that they do not have to take over the thoughts from their environment, from their parents, from school, from the media. Your accumulated subconscious and conscious decisions that you make throughout the day, which are hundreds, step by step create your reality. Now, if you keep contradicting your decisions, um, making one decision, then changing your mind and doing that, if you keep flip-flopping and wavering, none of your decisions are going to have enough energy uh, to manifest. That's why I recommend once you make a decision, to stick to it until it's complete, until it's manifest. Do not be contradicting your own words too often. Allow your words, your, allow your thoughts, words, and deeds to be aligned, to be congruent. And that way it'll be easier for people to relate to you. You'll be seen as more reliable and you'll be more empowered because you stick to the decisions you made, even if there's pressure from outside to change your decisions. Your decisions may not always be popular, but that's okay. You can please some of the people some of the time. You cannot please all of the people all of the time. So one way to waste energy is by constantly contradicting your own decisions. Once you make a decision, stick to it. The exception is, of course, if you make a really bad decision and you realize your decision is bad, you can abort it any time. Any decision can be stopped and aborted in favor of a better decision. But do not be doing that too often. Sometimes a bad decision is better than no decision at all because a bad decision allows you to experience a pathway and learn from it, grow from it, by trial and error. Whereas no decision is kind of a coward's realm, where you decide neither this nor that. 
However, making no decision is also making a decision. A decision for what? A decision for undefined nothingness. And undefined nothingness is only useful when you want to rest and relax, when you want to retreat and observe. But if you stay in that undefined space, you won't experience much. You'll experience a sort of stagnation where nothing much is happening. So it's always good to make a decision. It's always better to make a decision than no decision. And not to spend too much time in that undefined space where you have no position, no opinion, no path. If you know what to focus on, that can be very relieving, and it also can also make you very successful. You decide over three things. You decide over what actions you will take. You decide over what to focus on, and you decide what to think. You decide what things mean for you. Those are the basic decisions that you make in life. The word decision is related to scissors because it's a cut. It's a cut in favor of one reality, limiting your focus to one thing and allowing something else to move into the background. That's one reason people are shy of making decisions, because it changes things, and because those changes have consequences, and they'd have to own and take responsibility for the consequences they create. So they're shy of making decisions. However, the more you train your decision muscle, the more powerful you become. If you don't make decisions, somebody else is going to make decisions for you. And it's usually these sometimes annoying, strong-willed people that make the decisions for you. They have a lot of energy, they're strong-willed, they see that you're not making any decision, so they step in and do it for you, which they shouldn't, of course, ethically, but they do it anyway because they have so much surplus energy. So if you're not going to make your decisions, something or someone will come along and decide for you what to think. Decide for you what things mean. Decide for you what to focus on. Decide for you what to do. Make big decisions only when you're in a good state of mind, a good frame of mind. Making decisions from anger or fear will usually lead be bad decisions and lead to negative consequences. Make decisions from love. If you're facing a decision, you can ask yourself, if I make a decision on this, is that coming from fear or from love? And that might make it easier for you to make that decision, because if it's coming from fear, it's not a decision you should make. Another trick when dealing with decisions, especially dilemmas, is to write down the advantages of both sides. So if you're facing the decision of this job or that job, and you're thinking, well, I can't decide, this job has disadvantages, that job has disadvantages, it would be smart to write down the advantages of both sides so that both sides feel good. So that it's easy to see that if I go this path, it's interesting. If I go that path, it's interesting, which is often the case. Whether you take Highway A or Highway B does not so much matter. What matters is your own state, who you are on either Highway A or Highway B. And that's what I teach. Your inner state matters more than the path. Another thing you can do is to increase your options if, if you're facing a dilemma, which is um, usually consisting of two things. So if somebody does not want to sell me strawberry ice cream, he'll manipulate me by saying, okay, you can choose between vanilla or chocolate. And by not mentioning strawberry, he focuses my attention on chocolate and vanilla. But you do not have to manipulate yourself in that way. You can increase your options and see, okay, I can choose between chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, um, peach, or I can make a mix of them all. So increasing your options is another trick you can reuse when facing, your, when facing important decisions. This was a basic lesson on decision-making, 
and the power of decision. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, distribute this video far and wide. Thank you very much. Thank you.